eyes. Recalling our baptism, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I was glad what they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart is glad in him, because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Let us now make confession of our sin to God, our Heavenly Father. O God, our Father, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have transgressed your law and have brought injury to others. We have not always shown forth our faith in every aspect of our lives. We sincerely repent of our sins. Have mercy on us and hear this, our confession, O Lord. Grant us your grace and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. By the renewing work of the Holy Spirit within us, lead us to amend our sinful lives that each day we grow in righteousness and godly living to the glory of your holy name. The Lord hears our pleas and accepts our prayers. To each of us, our Lord promises forgiveness, life, and salvation. And so as a called and ordained servant of Christ, I forgive you all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen, we sing.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you invite us to trust in you for our salvation. Deal with us not in the severity of your judgment, but by the greatness of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated. Service of the Word begins with the Old Testament reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 25. Again today, it is easy to see uh, the mirroring of the Old Testament reading in the Gospel reading. Isaiah writes about a great feast uh, where he describes heaven, and Jesus uses that same imagery in his parable. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all people, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading continues in the book of Philippians, today chapter four. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Alleluia. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Let the one who hears say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires to take the water of life without price. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they could not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who were invited, See, I've prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his farm, another to his business. While the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry. He sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. And then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, to the main roads and invite the wedding, to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. And so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Children can stay with your parents again this morning for the children's message. Boys and girls, if you're like me, you'd like to go out to eat for dinner. Right? That's fun to do. Go to a special restaurant and order from the menu and, and, uh, and enjoy your family that way. What if you were to go to the restaurant and your parents told you, you can order anything you want. Would you still order the chicken fingers? <laughs> Maybe you would order dessert first. Or maybe you'd order a steak or the lobster. Now, we don't do that when we go out for dinner. We don't usually order dessert because that's just a little too expensive for us. And we don't order the steak very often because, again, that's just a little bit too expensive. We're satisfied with lesser expensive things. But we still enjoy ourselves. We still enjoy someone else preparing the food and enjoying our family time together. The Old Testament reading for just a moment ago describes a very similar situation. A feast, a time for great food, Will you enjoy the presence of your family. What Isaiah is talking about is heaven. He's talking what, about what a wonderful place and what a wonderful experience heaven will be. It'll be not only filled with the greatest food, It'll be filled with our loving family and friends. Jesus will be there. It will be everything that we could ever imagine. You know what happens when you go to the restaurant and your meal is over? The waitress comes and gives you the check, right? And who has to pay for that? Mom and dad have to pay for that, right? In heaven, 
at that great feast, there will be no check because Jesus has already paid for it in full, not with money, but with his life. He died to win us forgiveness and peace with God and entrance into this wonderful, eternal feast. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the promise of heaven. We thank you for what we can anticipate now as we look forward to that joyous time. We thank you that Jesus has paid for our entry there and paid for it in full in himself. And for that, you make us thankful people. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue with our hymn of the day, Spread the Reign of God the Lord. mercy and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Again, our meditation today based upon the gospel reading, yet another parable uh, from Jesus. Dear Christian friends, we understand that God does not always do things the way we do them. In fact, that's exactly what Isaiah tells us, that God says that my ways are not your ways. Your thinking is not my thinking. And so it comes as no surprise to us that there will be times and circumstances in which the ways of God might sound a bit odd to us. That may actually be happening in this parable from Jesus today. He does something interesting in this parable in that he tells the story from the perspective of sinful human beings. Let me illustrate that for you from the text. We've got this parable where a king throws a wedding party for his son Everything is prepared, the food, the hall, everything is ready. He sends his servants out to get those who have been invited, and they are too busy with business, with the farm. They don't care to come. Well, that doesn't turn out well for them. The king decides to invite others, and he sends his servants out to to gather others to come. And understanding again, as I've mentioned already, this is a description of heaven. This is a parable about the eternal feast, the wedding feast of the Lamb. 
And this is what he says, and this is where it is from human perspective. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. That actually is a bad translation. It's not he gathered bad and good. Actually, it's evil and good. The word here is the same one Jesus uses in the Lord's Prayer when he says, deliver us from evil. That God is going to gather evil and good at his eternal wedding feast. And that might sound a bit odd to us, particularly in our human nature. God is going to call evil and good people into his presence. Why bother then (laughs) trying to live a good life? If in the end it's not going to matter, why bother? Well, before we jump off that cliff, let's listen to what else Jesus has to tell us in this parable. As is often the case, the context can be helpful. This is Monday of Holy Week. It's the day after Palm Sunday. It's just a few days before the cross. Crowds are gathered to hear Jesus speak. In those crowds are good and evil people. There are the Pharisees. And from a human perspective, they are good people. (laughs) They keep perfectly the more than 600 of the rabbinic laws. If you had a son, you would want him to grow up to be a rabbi. If you had a daughter, you would want her to marry a rabbi. And if you had a rabbi move in next door to you, he would make a great neighbor. And then there were also, from human perspective, evil ones. There were tax collectors, nothing more than thieves. There were prostitutes who used their bodies in ungodly ways. Clearly, they were evil. And so is heaven going to be made up of good and evil? Is God some kind of universalist? That means that a person believes that everybody's going to be in heaven. But God, God would not send anyone to hell. God can just ignore sin and say, ah, never mind. And that's false. God is not only love, God is also just. And sin must be punished according to God's justice. According to his love, it was punished in Jesus rather than you and me. No, you see, God does not care how other human beings might perceive you to be good or evil. It's not as if God is waiting on some kind of popularity contest to tell him whether or not you would be acceptable in his sight. No, God sees through 
all of our facades. And he sees to the core. And he sees, in fact, that each of us are sinful. That, in fact, each of us have this quality called evil. And that is why Christ died for all. That's why Jesus would tell Nicodemus, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. It was because of the evil condition of the world and you and me that God sent Jesus to take our sin on himself and pay its price in full so that we might have access to that eternal feast of the wedding lamb in eternity. But see, that also, and I've talked about this before, it also introduces what I call the tragedy of the gospel. That indeed, this Jesus died for all. But this parable makes it abundantly clear that all will not receive the benefit of what Jesus did in dying and rising for them. Tragedy indeed. And so what makes the difference? What makes the difference for entry into this eternal banquet? Well, the parable spells it out well. When he says that all, both evil and good, all were invited. And those who responded in faith, those who, you see later in the parable, those who were dressed properly, dressed in the righteousness of Christ, they will be admitted into that eternal banquet. And so you've got these Pharisees who I said by human perception were really quite good people. But Jesus sees through that facade. He sees that they are people of unbelief. He sees that they are unrepentant, that they believe they have no need to confess any sin because they believe they keep them all. They believe, in fact, that heaven would be honored if they would grace heaven with their presence. And so they find themselves on the outside looking in. Uh, but not all of them. This, this Nicodemus that Jesus met with, he comes to faith. He assists in Jesus' burial in a loving and helpful way. And then there's Pharisee Saul, who recognizes his sin and need and comes to faith in Jesus and becomes the greatest promoter of the gospel the world has ever seen. And the tax collectors and the prostitutes, they too are invited. And many repent and turn from their sin and follow Jesus. But let me give you just two more examples, a little more timely than that. I'll say the name Jeffrey Dahmer. 
I think it was in the 70s and 80s, he was a serial killer. I believe in Wisconsin. 17 people dead. Evil. Or Field Marshal Wilhelm Keitel. The highest officer in Hitler's army. Evil. Both of those men died confessing Christ. They died in repentant, saving faith. Invited to the feast clothed in the righteousness of Christ. And so what about you and me? We too find ourselves among the good and the evil. We too have been invited. And each of us have been clothed with the righteousness of Christ, covered with Christ in our baptism. That's exactly what Paul promises in Galatians 3. Covered with Christ, clothed in the righteousness that Jesus won for us on Calvary's cross. And so when Christ looks at you, he doesn't see good or evil because he looks at you through the lens of the cross. And what he sees is good, as in Good Friday. He sees a child of God, forgiven, at peace, and headed to the banquet. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. If you would please be seated. I don't know how much of this is a secret, but uh, we're, uh, <laughs> maybe it is a secret. <laughs> he, he looked over his mask at me. <laughs> uh, we, thought, we felt it appropriate uh, and right to recognize uh, Nick and uh, the work that uh, he has done here, not just the past 12 years as a principal here at Emmanuel, uh, serving uh, faithfully, uh, during those 12 years working uh, 
uh, just uh, incredibly hard during that time. I see that every day. Uh, but particularly th these last uh, six months or seven months in the, in the face of COVID-19, uh, he, he and the faculty were able to, uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in the span of about three days, uh, shut the school down and go to virtual learning in a very effective manner. While others were simply treading water, uh, we were moving forward and that, that all happened under Nick's direction. Uh, in the midst of that, he was also uh, putting together with, uh, and it didn't go very smoothly or very easily, <laughs> uh, putting together a, 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 a child and a infant care uh, program in, in the, in the uh, school that uh, are the 30, 35. 35 kids enrolled in that, nearly maxed out in that. So that's, that was no easy task either. So I, I know personally how, how challenging and at times difficult and heart-wrenching uh, the last uh, seven uh, months have been, and I uh, can tell you that uh, that Nick has worked just remarkably well. His family, um, I know, just, uh, struggled along with him at times, and for that we are grateful. I thought I would read for you, because I think it is apt and fitting, uh, the second verse from O Church Arise that we sang a moment ago. Our call to war, to love the captive soul, but to rage against the captor. And with the sword that makes the wounded whole, we will fight with faith and valor. When faced with trials on every side, we know the outcome is secure, and Christ will have the prize for which he died, an inheritance of nations. Thank you, Nick. Thanks. With full confidence that our prayers will be heard by our loving God, we offer our petitions for the church, the world, and all people in need. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the well-being of creation in our land and every land, for all coastlands and waters, and for all fields and forests. Grant that we be proper stewards of all the gifts we have received. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, that it grow as the Spirit leads and directs, even in those places where persecution of Christian people is still is daily reality. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in need of special petitions this day, including the injured or ill, people in hospitals or other care centers, those dealing with special challenges, the shut-in, the unemployed, those who are grieving this day. We especially name before you for healing, for Bob Four and Don Groney, who both received hip replacement this past week, for Michelle Bittner, dealing with cancer. We thank you that Pastor Craig and his family have tested negative and uh, that they will return uh, to uh, be among us soon. We pray peace and comfort for the family and friends of Jim Garrison, who many years ago was a teacher and principal here at Emmanuel. Be the support of those in need and the comfort of those who are burdened. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we remember with gratitude those whose earthly lives are now completed, we ask that we be blessed by the memory of all who have fallen asleep in Jesus, especially those of this community of faith who have left behind examples of joyful trust and blessed hope. And Lord, we pray your hand of blessing upon Thomas Coughlin's family that they would raise him after his baptism in the late service, raise him to know, love, serve, and worship you. We rejoice with Jesse and Jenna who restated their wedding vows uh, publicly after doing so privately in the midst of COVID-19 six months ago. And Lord, we rejoice uh, that you have brought Nick Hoppensberger into our midst for these 12 years, and that you have 
blessed us with his service, his sacrifice, and we pray for many more years of that among us. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. But our citizenship is in heaven. And from it we wait a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things unto himself. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor, give you peace. Amen. We sing. Mm -hmm.